The weather also sucks. I'm well moist. I think I've got trench foot. Donkey. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just sit on it, Stu? I feel like somebody's down for a ride on it. Mate, if I fall, I'm going straight in the tents. Oh, this is not bad. Oh no, we're going for the hill. Oh crap. Oh no. <laughs> that was your workout for the day. All right, should we load up panels first? Hi guys, welcome back to another episode where today we're working on an island literally an island on the Thames, which is really cool. Basically, they've got a solar system that's already installed. I always think of like planets when I say solar system. They've got a solar PV system installed, but it's way underperforming. There's a lot of faults on it. There's a lot of issues. Panels aren't pairing, and it's way below the kilowatt peak that it's designed for. So it's a solar edge system. We're gonna see if we can fix it and then add a few more panels into it to improve the design a little bit to make it a bit better. The island itself, I'm just gonna really quickly ramble on about. It's called Eel Pie Island. I think it was called that because King Henry, when he'd come down here um, on his missions to wherever he was going, probably Ibiza or somewhere, um, he would come in here for eel pie. So it's Eel Pie Island. You've got Rolling Stones met here, I think, The Who. There's a ton of music links here. Go in the comments below and tell me everything you know about the music and history of Eel Pie Island because personally just working on it has been so cool. However, the weather also sucks, um, which is a bit, difficult but I'm with my friend Ben today from Entire Renewables. Hi! So one of the issues with this job as well is we can't actually drive onto the island so there's no cars on the island because basically the Thames kind of just goes around it it splits around so it's just this little bit so you've got this land bridge here and it's gonna be a lot of back and forth so yeah be a bit of a mission but we'll do it. Make sure nothing falls off. Oh yeah it's got really heavy. How did you do this? Oh, go back for another coffee. Here we are, this is the site. This is the start of my uh, life changing. What is it? I used to be fat. This is my episode one. Oh, hi, uh, it's, the, it's the electrician. I'm just here to uh, put some panels on. Ah. Right, so this is the, the site here. So we're gonna be going up there. All the panels are on the roof, but I'll show you the mains where it comes in. Ben, you'll, you'll like to see this. Oh, spiders. Are you ready to see a new install? by Tesla approved installers. A lot of this is brand new and it was way worse, but I got him, the customer to file a complaint to get him to come back. Like these tails were coming in through two separate stuffing vans, one up here, one down there. So they were completely in the wrong end of the board. So if you can leave a comment why, why that's an issue. These were um, the uh, mod bus, the, you know, the little meter was wired up the wrong way around. These were all wrong. The whole board was wide in um, reverse polarity. They had wood screws in here, which I'm not really convinced that's much better. So this is after they've come back. It is just shocking, like what they can get away with. All single insulated tails coming out of there. There was copper showing last time I was here as well. How can you like go home and sleep at night doing something like that? On site, we've got a Tesla power wall and we've got a solar edge system and an inverter. But the reason why we're here is because basically when we've actually looked at the design that the people who've installed this have provided, they, they've put on their G99 application, I think up to like a eight kilowatt peak that the array can actually produce. But when you look on the solar edge app, it's only generating something like three or four kilowatt peak. So the plan is to add some more panels into his existing setup, make his setup a bit larger and uh, see if we can make it better basically this is the solar edge inverter here and then the tesla power wall we're up this little yep. coolie space which is true we just noticed well i say we just noticed we've just gone onto it so if we see there we've got eight out of 18 optimizers communicating and working really that wants to be 18 out of 18. we've got no power ac production so there's nothing producing we've got voltage coming in from the dc but nothing going out so basically this 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 inverter is actually not doing anything it's just not paired correctly there um whether that's a faulty optimizer or not but if we switch it off on that dc there we should see the voltage come down so we're just going to fault find basically to see what's actually gone wrong the good thing we've had in the solar edge optimizers is on the optimizer when it loses signal it just drops down to one volt so it makes it very easy to see 
which panels are on and which panels are off. You can see here, you've got the layout. If you look over the course of a week, these haven't been generating anything. Seems pretty unlikely that they're generating literally nothing in a week. So with that being the case, there definitely must be some kind of fault. So we'll have to open up these. Test for voltage, test for polarity. We've set that to repair, so let's leave that and see how it, how it gets back on. It may well come back to 18 out of 18. Yeah, whereas well, 14, There you 15. go, 15, probably is. So when we get to 18 and switch it back on, that just should start producing. So what did you do there? Just repaired it. Maybe it's been switched off for a while, I don't know. Maybe when they were doing the, uh, te the fixing the Tesla thing. Possibly. Don't end up in the Thames. We locked. Only one way to find out. planning on adding three panels per string so at the minute there's two strings with eight panels on one and ten panels on the other but we'd like to add three more onto this string and three more onto that string so we're just planning how we can actually orientate them to fit more onto there because these are slightly older panels they're 360 watt the ones we're putting on they 405s or 410s yeah we're putting 405 watt panels on and they're a little bit larger we're thinking if we reshuffle them around, we might be able to get three in portrait there with the benefit of using the, uh, the optimizers, it makes it a lot easier. We can kind of just cut into them, plug in, and then that's in that string. It'll all make sense as we're doing it, but Go for it. yeah, let's do it before the weather turns. <laughs> um, but if you say to yourself, I really wanted it to rain today. I really fancied just being a bit moist and now I'm well happy look mm. I'm well moist <laughs> you're a natural stew I think you're a crab in a past life I got crabs off my uncle once <laughs> my uncle bought me hermit crabs and I absolutely loved them but if you didn't clean them out literally every day they stink of fish I remember one time I was at school and uh, my mum was like they stink, you need to clean them out, otherwise I'm putting them outside. And I was like, no, nah, no, I'll do it when I get home. Anyway, I ended up going to my friend's house and it snowed. So I was like, oh, I stayed over at my friend's house and it was a snow day, so we got the day off of school. I stayed around his house, having a great time, and then I come home and I'm like, I go up to my room and I'm like, right, where, where's Mr. Krabs and friends? And uh, my mum's like, oh no, they're outside. And I'm like, no, they're not. She says, yeah, they stunk, so I put them outside yesterday and I forgot about them. <laughs> I go out there, they're covered, little bugs covered in snow. I clear the snow off and they're just inside their little pond, frozen to death. And I'm in the, I'm crying my eyes out. I come inside, I'm like rinsing them off, like in the warm water to try and revive them, like Googling, can I see PR as crab on my little PSP? And uh, yeah, no, they just like slosh out of the shell and they're just in there and I'm like in pieces. We definitely had different upbringings. <laughs> <laughs> Massively different. Yeah. Don't never lie to me. I don't though. believe that living in Cheshire, you not never got crabs. Put some fixings back in these old holes just to block them, weather seal them. Ah, shoot. Ah, donkey. This weather is wicked, mate. So glad I wore my waterproofs. Not. There's lightning, we're in trouble. Okay, we're gonna... We're just gonna quickly go see if the customer's um, coffee machine is working, because I saw it, and I don't know, if it looked a little bit dodgy to me. I think I saw some steam coming out of it, and it's an expensive one, so I'm gonna go put that to the test. I, I, basically, I'm, I'm following Ben's lead. At the minute, I very much consider myself an apprentice when it comes to complicated... I was following yours. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is like when you see a dog just chasing its tail. Yeah. So I can put panels on a house, but as soon as it gets really complicated, that's why I'm really enjoying learning it. I think this is ready for panels now, so we'll get some panels on it, and then we need to fix that one down, and then at least this string is done. And there's a wood-fired hot tub around the back. I wonder if we could be really cheeky and just test that that's working. <laughs> the way I see it, I want to tidy the cables up, but what's worse, like tidying the cables up for the sake, drilling holes in the roof for fixings for the sake of tidying them up or keeping the roof integrity sound and just having them a little bit looser. Look at that. It is so cool. The FK3. I'll leave a link to Unilite in the description below. And uh, if you use my code, you get 25% off and I get 10% of that. So we're all winners. Oh, this isn't at all sketchy. I can see no foreseeable issues with this whatsoever. Got it. I looked at my wellies this morning. I thought, yeah, nah, I'm on a roof. I don't think I'll be crawling through. I feel like I'm in the Somme. 
My feet are getting so wet. I think I've got trench foot. Look slippy. Let's see if I can make it look easier. <laughs> you right? Yeah. All right. I was just about to say that was easy. <laughs> Why would you build that building there? That big ugly council flat looking thing. I. You've got all these artsy buildings. You've literally got an ice cream cone on your roof, and then you've got 1980s quick build. I just think this end, this side is not really. It's just not on the cards. It's so slippy as well. We need some kind of scaffolding, but then that means getting their permission to scaffold in their garden. And you've still got the shading off of their property anyway. Yeah. So when the sun's low over there, it's not going to touch the panels. And also, there's the risk that the sun will bounce off and blind the pilots landing there. <laughs> I don't want that on my hands. Do you want a plane crash on your hands? Well, that settles it, I think. That settles it. Let's go Good to the Greek restaurant. <laughs> I'd love to make a no-holds-barred, like, exclusive section where we can be as politically incorrect as we like and have no editing. <laughs> Just four hours of fun. Do you tell your friends you're an international cameraman now? Uh, <laughs> you need friends first. <laughs> can I count my mum as a friend? <laughs> Ben's like, I'm so glad I drove four hours for this. <laughs> I hate how difficult they are to slide. Is there a knack to it that I'm not quite getting? Nope. Just a struggle. Yeah. And then somewhere we have some mids and ends. Woo hoo hoo hoo! Bye bye birdies! <laughs> I know they're attacking it. Ah! No! Leave my drone alone. They're literally all attacking it. Oh no. Why are they so mad at my drone? They are not impressed. <laughs> ah! The poor environment. I told you it's bad for you. I'm gonna go and plant some trees. No, I don't believe that. Oh, the fish are gonna be hyperactive. Oh, there is, there's pigeon blood on it. Oh. Hey, I legit think that is pigeon blood. They're so beautiful. Right, we've had our Greek and it was amazing. Absolutely brilliant. Now, <laughs> we're gonna go up, get the rest of the panels on. We've just checked and they've all paired up to the inverter beautifully. Now we need to get the rest of them panels on. So you can't go in that jacuzzi, isn't it? I've so got a jacuzzi at home. Have you? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> it's pops our wages, you. Us northerners can't afford it. No. Well, you probably don't have enough electricity in the grid up there to be able to run it. I just want to pause the video very quickly to tell you about a really exciting announcement. I'm trying to dip my toe into a completely different line of business to electrics. I don't really fancy crawling around in lofts when I'm uh, 95. So I want to be, um, I don't know, crawling around somewhere nicer, like one of those have you seen those soft play things for adults? <laughs> They're really cool. It's like a little bar. Anyway, so my friend Ben here um, says to me the other day, we're talking about little side businesses that we're interested in, right? And I said, a side business that I'm trying to go into at the minute is honey. I'm trying to get an apiary. Like, I feel like people find that quite funny, but I'm serious. Down in Dorset, I'm trying to buy bees and set that up. Um, and he says, oh, I'm into rum. He said, let me send you a bottle. So I, I tried it. And I was like, that right there, is absolutely delicious. Like just the feel of the bottle, every, I was so impressed, no offense, Thank but you. I felt like I was just expecting something a bit more DIY, because <laughs> you're an electrician, ultimately, that was sending it to me. But I was like, this is awesome. And Hygge, Hygge. or Hygge, 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 I don't know. Norwegian word. My fiance is Norwegian. Obviously my whole company, the electrical and all the rest of it, I was like, this is amazing. And then I speak to Ben and he says to me, uh, I'm actually looking for someone to help me market it and help me just w with setting this up basically. And so I, I literally bit his hand off. This now is a new joint venture, um, which if you want to support, it would be awesome. But I'm hoping this is the future, along with the electrical stuff. Um, and you need to try it. We'll set up a discount code or something for any subscriber of Oil Electrical. Um, we've got loads of these to give out as well. We'll do a little giveaway. So we've got some of these miniatures. Go follow the Instagram account below for Higger and uh, we're gonna be doing a giveaway on there for all the Oil Electrical subscribers. And all you need to do is just follow that account and share it and uh, you can get yourself a nice bottle. And obviously, if you just wanna buy a bottle, I'll put the link to it below on Amazon as well. But honestly, one of the tastiest rums I've ever tried and for the price, it's just mad, right? Can you reach them? Reach. I can try. Hook your legs over the back.
Oh jeez. <laughs> Cheers mate, but it was the screws I need. <laughs> what was it? Is that Mission Impossible? If Tom Cruise put on a few stone. <laughs> what? So how, how it works is basically we're cutting into the string that the strings that are there already and we're putting them into vo voltage optimizers. So you see there's two inputs and outputs on the voltage optimizers. So one of them is for the actual wiring for the solar. The other one is for the actual panel itself to plug into. And that optimizes or regulates the voltage and allows us to see each panel on the app. So when we add these, these will all be placed on the actual app and we can see exactly what each one is producing, exactly what each one is generating. Oh man, my brain is slow today. So <laughs> wet and cold. Kind of in the race against the clock at the minute because uh, as soon as it gets dark, we can't program them. And I don't really know if a torch is going to quite provide enough photons to generate electricity. You can see the state of what we're walking in as well. It's like definitely not ideal working conditions, but never mind. It's a bit of a quilt, patchwork quilt. You saw when I put the drone up, it literally looks like Nana's quilt. A hodgepodge, higgledy piggledy collection of everything. But I find that quite beautiful in its own way. It's like this island. That's what I should say about all my work. It looks a bit rough, but it's beautiful in its own way. So my mum said when she saw me for the first time. Looks a bit rough. Beautiful in his own way, you know? I said that when I saw you for the first time, Stu. We're trying to make the absolute best of what we've got. We're trying to make our work 10 out of 10, but it's a bit demoralising sometimes when you're working on a system that is so, so rough. You want yours to look amazing, but you're never going to be able to get it looking that good because it's next to other toot. So are you disappointed you didn't get a script this morning then? Did you get You didn't get a script this morning? Yeah. It's all live. I thought it was staged. You thought it was staged? You think that kind of level of stupidity is staged? I'd take that as a compliment. We start the pairing process. So on the old Solar Edge HD Wave, we can use the buttons on the front to yeah. get into the inverter and start the pairing. Okay. The new HDs on Solar Edge, the screenless, so everything's done on the setup. Yeah. It'll just count down for about two and a half minutes, and then it'll start communicating to each panel. So you don't even have to tell the panels; it just does it for you. Exactly. Yeah. And then all we'll do is we plot where we're putting those serial numbers of the optimizers. Yeah. And we can adjust it on the monitoring portfolio but it'll give us a list of all the serial numbers. So you don't need to remember them, just where we put them. Unlike a string inverter, the optimizer means the wired in parallel. Yeah. So therefore, if one panel goes down or the shading or any faults, it doesn't affect the whole ray. Yeah, it just knocks that one panel out. Yeah, whereas a string inverter, it take anything that's connected to that string. So basically, the cut, while we're here, the Tesla app isn't working. It's saying that he's just exporting from Soda all the time, even at night time, which is, not likely, not really possible. So, I'm just opening this up, right? it's a bit better than how I found it last time. When I found it last time, it was absolutely shocking. This CT here was the wrong way round. You can see it clearly says on it, this side towards the grid, um, or towards the source, and it was facing away from the source. So actually that one is the right way round, this one. So it must have just been that. That's about right now, isn't it? Yeah. So the solar's gone down to zero and we've got 1.7 kilowatts importing. Brilliant. Right, so um, that's the Tesla app fix. Basically the CT was the wrong way around. That was all, so it was just reading it completely wrong, telling him it was exporting when actually it was importing. So we flipped that around, sorted that. We're gonna be coming back and tidying all of this up because it's just horrendous. And at the minute, there is one, two, three, four, five, six meters here on one property because it was lots of properties and it's been turned into one so he's going to be getting a three phase meter and i think i might even just end up coming and fitting like a bus bar chamber or something just to connect all of these into might work out better because they're already fused inside of here i don't know if you've ever seen inside one of these main heads you'll have lots of fuses inside of there um so we don't really need these as long as that cable is rated to whatever's in there we could probably just put a hundred um, an 80 amp bs 1361 fuse in there and then that will rate that cable okay. Almost finished with the day, but first thing I need to do is go on to Tradeify and send over my invoice. One thing that has made my life much easier running a business is being organized. Naturally, I'm a bit 
I get so into the project and the job that I forget about the paperwork and all that kind of thing. I know Jordan and the people at Artisan are probably laughing watching this because it's, I've been a bit notorious for it, but I'm really trying my hardest to get more organized. So I've been using Tradeify. And what's good is I, I invoice before I even left, left the job. I don't have to come home and start doing paperwork and things. I put down any materials, any notes, do all my invoices, send that off. And also the customer thinks you're really organized as well. So sorted. If you want to try Tradeify, I've got a code below. Go give it a shot. All right, so we've finished the job, but we're going to go for a little drink because Ben's still got a four hour drive to get back home. But I'm thinking, I say go for a drink, we're just going to go for some dinner and maybe a, a beer or a half. Um, but I think we should have a game of, let's see if we can get a bar or a pub to start stocking this tonight. For, for the electrical content, thank you for watching, goodbye. For the general business content, I reckon we see if we can get a bar to stock this. We're going to go to a nice little hipster bar somewhere, hipster pub, and we're going to get them to start ordering Hugo and put it on the menu. That's our mission. Right, so we tried our luck with the rum in the pubs there and uh, we've got the same response from both people now nah, mate you have to go to head office we can't decide that so that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to go to head office and try that but again if you want to try that go hit below because i feel like that could be a really cool little sideline and it just fits with the whole theme of quality huga actually or higa actually means like I don't know exactly how you describe it. It's like warm, cozy, comfortable. Um, and I feel like it'd be nice to have people share their Hugo moments. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed today. I certainly have. It's been mad. It's been horrible. Like, I'm soaked to the bone. I just want to go home and have a hot bath really, really badly. Um, but it was great working with Ben. So I feel like I'm getting much more experience now with these kind of out of the ordinary jobs where rather it's very easy just to come and bash a load of panels onto a nice clean roof with scaffolding but when you say a system like that where you've got a system that's not working in the first place you've got the tesla you've got all the other systems added into it heat pumps and everything and we've got to try and get that all working and talking to each other happily while also then adding to that system and cutting into it it's pretty faffy but i feel now like i'm getting a much deeper understanding of how it works i'm starting to be able to apply more quality and kind of build my knowledge on it a little bit so i'm happy about that even if it is hard work but anyway thank you so much for watching and i'll see you on the next one